Europe's daring decision to sever connections with Russian gas has rocked its economy, revealing weaknesses and setting in motion a high-stakes struggle for energy stability. Powering industry, heating homes, and keeping the lights on, Europe depended on inexpensive Russian gas for years to drive its economic expansion. It will cost a hefty penny, though, to lessen this reliance. Huge repercussions will result. The industrial shutdowns and subsequent spike in energy prices hurt both family budgets and enterprises. Rising prices and the prospect of energy rationing are major concerns. Liquefied natural gas and renewable energy sources are being pursued as a result of this crisis, which highlights the precariousness of Europe's energy dependency. As Europe struggles to resolve complex geopolitical problems and discover alternative energy sources, the continent's economic stability is in jeopardy. For Europe's energy future, this isn't a passing issue, it's a crisis. Please subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up before we go into the specifics. Okay then, let's go right in. Europe and Russian natural gas have had a tense relationship for quite some time, with the continent's governments vacillating between heavy reliance on Russian gas and a desire to explore alternative energy supplies. The energy security of Europe has been greatly affected by this tug-of-war with Russian gas. Russian natural gas has long been an attractive auction for Europe due to the country's abundance and proximity to the European market. However, Europe is worried about political pressure and potential shortages of gas due to its reliance on Russian gas. It has been difficult for Europe to reduce its reliance on Russian gas despite the continent's efforts to employ alternative energy sources. Nearly 155 billion cubic meters, or 45%, of the gas that the European Union used in 2021 came from Russia. The lack of fast alternatives and the length of the agreements with Russia have made this issue even worse. Due to the crisis between the two countries, Europe hastened its preparations to reduce its energy consumption from Russia. The European Union devised the Repower EU plan to swiftly wean itself off of Russian fossil fuels by increasing its use of renewable energy, improving its energy efficiency and exploring other gas suppliers. It will require time and effort to switch energy sources. The European Union must simultaneously address its energy demands, political concerns, and environmental objectives. Efforts to explore other energy sources, such as increasing the use of renewable power and liquefied natural gas, are underway, but they need substantial investment and careful preparation. Gas from Russia was mostly sent to Europe via pipelines before the crisis between Russia and Ukraine, with Germany being the largest recipient. The current is flowing backward now. Russian liquefied natural gas, LNG, ships dock in Western European countries like France, Belgium, and Spain before making their way east to destinations like Italy and Germany. With this new path comes a slew of consequences. Since the war started, the European Union's imports of Russian LNG have grown substantially. Russia sent 15.6 million metric tons of LNG to European Union ports in 2023, a significant increase from levels before the conflict. Because of its well-developed LNG import infrastructure, Spain is now an important point of entry and exit for Russian LNG inside the European Union. Because liquefying, transporting, and regasifying the fuel is an energy-intensive operation, switching to LNG comes with a greater environmental cost. Efforts by the EU to reduce emissions of greenhouse gases are at odds with this. There is a severe energy crisis affecting all of Europe at the moment, with prices skyrocketing and supplies falling drastically. Businesses and people are finding it difficult to keep up with the energy market's erratic fluctuations throughout this crisis. The epidemic, political unrest, and supply chain destructions were the initial sparks that ignited the catastrophe. There wasn't enough energy to go around when people started requiring more following the outbreak, so prices jumped tremendously high. A price increase of almost 500% was experienced in certain regions for natural gas. The situation has become even more dire due to political disputes and struggles for control. Energy supplies to Europe have been reduced due to the conflict in Ukraine and sanctions imposed on Russian energy companies. The situation is further exacerbated since European nations cannot agree on how to handle the problem. Large corporations and average households alike are feeling the effects of the current energy crisis. The high cost of electricity has forced many individuals to make tough choices, such as whether to heat their houses or buy food. As a result of the high cost of electricity, some companies have reduced their operations or even shut down. There is now a different kind of Russian gas that the EU depends on. 
Putin has switched Europe's gas supply from eastern pipelines to western ports for Russian LNG. The European Union has witnessed a dramatic decrease in pipeline flows due to a spike in imports of Russian LNG, even though restrictions on Russian natural gas have not been imposed. The European Union is currently Russia's largest LNG consumer, even if LNG levels did not correspond to pipeline flows before the war. Center for Research on Energy and Clean Air Statistics show that in February 2024, the European Union received about half of Russia's liquefied natural gas exports, with China ranking in second with 21%. Russian LNG imported into Western European ports, mainly in France, Belgium and Spain, has supplanted around 10% of the prior Russian pipeline flows to the EU. This change shows that Russian LNG is catching up on some of the lost pipeline exports, even while pipeline supply has decreased. Furthermore, this demonstrates that Europe must continue to rely on Russian gas until it finds other means of generating electricity to avoid a repeat of the current energy crisis. The EU's unwillingness to lose any gas supply to prevent price rises and a recurrence of the energy crisis of 2022 is shown by the fact that neither pipeline gas nor LNG imports from Russia are prohibited. While the European Union plans to phase out Russian gas by 2027, no individual member state has yet taken action to prohibit Russian LNG imports. Russian LNG imports to EU ports increased marginally from 2022 to 15.6 million metric tons last year, a substantial 37.7% rise over 2021 shipments before the conflict. Although the proportion of Russian gas supplied to the European Union has decreased from 35% to 9% due to pipeline gas imports, the proportion of Russian gas supplied to the EU has increased to around 15% due to LNG imports. According to the Institute for Energy Economics and Financial Analysis analysis, the majority of this increase in LNG supply has gone to Belgium and Spain. The fact that Spain has surpassed all other EU nations in re-exporting Russian supplies is evidenced by the fact that a large portion of these purchases, especially from Belgium, are re-exported to China. But there's a big environmental cost to importing LNG. The energy needed for gasification transport and re-leak faction runs counter to the EU's target of reaching net zero emissions of greenhouse gases by the year 2050. Despite a 4% increase in total LNG imports, Belgium saw a 44% spike in Russian imports in February. At the same time, a large portion of Belgium's 81% increase in LNG re-exports went to China and Spain. This highlights the important role that Belgium plays in exporting Russian gas globally. As reported by CREA, switching to alternative energy sources can drive up energy prices, impacting households and companies alike. Currently, Europe is purchasing gas from Russia due to its lower prices and reliable performance. The issue is that Europe's energy infrastructure, including its storage and pipelines, was primarily designed to import gas from Russia. Altering to use energy from alternative sources might be time-consuming and costly due to the need to install new infrastructure. Due to its heavy reliance on Russian gas, Europe must exercise caution in its dealings with Russia. A sudden cut-off of Russian gas imports may disrupt energy supplies and worsen tensions, both of which would be bad for the economy. However, initiatives like repowering the EU are an attempt by the European Union to reduce its energy consumption from Russia in light of the current situation in Ukraine. Increasing the use of renewable energy, improving energy efficiency, and exploring alternative gas sources are all parts of this approach. Europe is working harder than ever before to identify alternative energy sources that are safer, more environmentally friendly, and more efficient, even though it will be difficult to immediately quit using Russian gas. If Europe wants a safe and stable energy supply, it must invest in energy infrastructure. Building additional pipelines, interconnectors, and LNG terminals is part of this plan to make it easier to transport gas from various locations. Through investments in energy infrastructure, the Repower EU plan of the European Commission seeks to hasten the shift to renewable energy sources and lessen reliance on fossil fuels supplied by Russia. In addition, Europe can lessen its dependence on overseas supplies and considerably lower its overall energy demand by increasing energy efficiency and decreasing energy waste. To end the energy crisis and guarantee energy security in the future, diplomatic initiatives and global collaboration are crucial. The European Union has to have a serious conversation with Russia 
and other energy producing countries to figure out a way forward that works for everyone. To further diversify energy sources and lessen Europe's exposure to geopolitical conflicts, it is recommended that the continent forge stronger ties with energy-rich regions, such as the Americas, Africa, and the Middle East. Finally, with unexpected shortages, high costs, and an immediate need for new energy sources, Europe's energy crisis has been an arduous ride. The dangers of being too dependent on one supply in times of geopolitical unrest were brought to light by the continent's substantial use of Russian natural gas. We must move towards greener, more diversified, and more secure energy sources. This is what Europe's energy crisis is trying to tell us. Europe can overcome its energy crisis and seize the potential for development and innovation by collaborating, investing in the future, and prioritizing sustainability. In your opinion, what should Europe do next to ensure its energy independence from Russia and to lessen its reliance on Russian gas? Leave a comment below with your ideas and opinions. The day came to a close with that. We'll see you at the next one. In the meantime, stay tuned.